The final target for the Second Crusade was the Kingdom of Portugal. Here was a long-standing warfare between Christian warriors and infidels, all fighting for the conquest of Lisbon, which at the time was a monumental feat attempted by Crusader armies who arrived in 1147. During the 1140s, Portugal became a county of military superpower. Thanks to leaders such as Afonso Enriquez, the vigorous ruler who made Portugal for what it was, he claimed titles such as the Great, the Founder, and the Conqueror. All titles earned for good reason as he was a great military leader. Not only that, but he was also the grandson of the famous Alfonso VI. The county of Portugal, of which Afonso ruled, consisted mostly of the city of Porto and its countryside. Though Afonso had many plans to expand his territory and the status of his kingdom, However, Afonso had a difficult time bringing the Muslim and Christian neighbours together, specifically the city of Lisbon, which was a large Muslim city at the time. The city of Lisbon was described as the largest, most lucrative, and most strategically important city for its time. It was a highly defensible port with mercantile connections to West Africa and the Tagus Valley. An Anglo-Norman cleric named Raoul stated that the city was founded in classical times by Odysseus and the tastiest fish, fruits, olives and honey were only in Lisbon. According to Raoul, Lisbon was the richest city in trade of all of Africa and a great part of Europe and Afonso Henriquez wanted that city in his hands no matter what. Afonso tried to conquer Lisbon in 1142 though he failed mostly due to the lack of support from other kingdoms. But by 1147, Afonso finally managed to receive help from the English, German, and Flemish crusaders that were promised whatever loot Lisbon had if they were willing to help Afonso and his army. After several weeks at sea, the crusaders joined up with Afonso and his Portuguese Templars. They arrived at their destination amid a show of cloudy weather. This must have been a good sign for the crusaders as they knew that God was with them during the battle. The siege of Lisbon began at the very end of June, with running battles between Muslims defending the suburbs beyond the city walls and crusaders beaching and disembarking their ships on the banks of an inlet in the Tagus. It continued for three and a half months, during which they fought the privations familiar to every generation of crusaders before them. Ahead of serious military operations, the crusade leaders agreed with Afonso a contract that assured them their rights to loot the city for all it's worth and take hostages for ransom before handing it over to the king. Then they went to work. In July, infantry stormed Lisbon suburbs, armed with slingshots and bows. Houses burned and civilians fled. In the Crusader camps, siege engineers, including one expert drafted from Paisa, began constructing towers protective shelters known as cats and sows, and giant mangonos that, when complete, could hammer the walls with 500 stones per hour. Miners struck ground on a tunnel to destroy the foundations of the city walls. Serious thought was given to building a floating fortress of towers mounted on interconnected boats which could attack the battlements from the river. A nightly watch was established so that the gates could be blockaded around the clock. Messengers who snuck out were captured and their letters confiscated while those demoralized citizens who came out begging for mercy and baptism were sent back to the city with their hands cut off. Inside the city, however, was much more devastating. The city's defenses dwindled down to nearly nothing and King Afonso ensured that all nearby towns remained neutral by sending troops to intimidate them or negotiate truces. The defenders sent repeated sorties out of the city to disrupt the blockade but were driven out each time with heavy losses. They even tried to use siege engines as well, but even those weren't enough to put down the might of the crusaders. The only weapon the defenders had were their mouths. According to Raoul, many of the citizens taunted the crusaders, commenting on their wives and children, even slandering the Virgin Mary and Christ's divine nature, even bringing out a sign of the cross just to spit on it. Although their words were painful, siege machines and stones brought back much more pain. Most decisive, however, was the fact that very early in the siege, the crusaders seized the main warehouses containing Lisbon's food supplies. The besiegers were therefore blessed with the rich abundance of food and drink, giving them strength, while inside Lisbon, the only food available was the refuse which was thrown out from the crusader ships and borne up by the waves beneath their walls. As autumn set in, hunger and hopelessness broke Lisbon's spirit. The final assault took place in the second half of October, when a mine brought down 200 feet of one section of the city's walls. 
while a siege tower's operators succeeded in lowering their drawbridge onto another. The game was up. On October 23rd, the defenders sued for peace and Alfonso Henriquez raised his flag over the garrison. The central mosque was constructed as a church and within two days, a stream of refugees was to be seen hurrying out of the city to seek solace and a new life elsewhere in Islamic Iberia. Raul later writes that the city was captured, the Saracens were killed, sold and expelled and the whole city was cleansed. A Latin bishop was established in the city, churches were constructed and clergy was ordained. It was a formidable start to a crusade whose main target was still about 2500 miles away. Edessa was the crusaders next target. With the onset of winter, no more travel was possible so the English and Flemish crusaders settled down in Lisbon and waited until spring to crusade once again. And that was the siege of Lisbon, an important battle during the second crusade that couldn't have been possible without Alfonso Henriquez and his strength and leadership. He would soon be remembered in crusader lore and the battle he took part in. Thank you for watching this video and supporting my love for history and I will see you on the next one.